A master of any discipline knows that to create with ease and inspiration, there must first be a platform upon which to stand, a platform that is stable, solid, comfortable, and supports the goal. For example, before cooking, a fine chef will clear the kitchen, assemble her tools and focus her full attention upon her art. Her passion and purpose is to embody the highest level of mastery possible. A fine chef radiates certainty, power, presence, and graciousness. She understands where the ingredients came from and their cultural history. She appreciates what they can become and how they and she can become transformed. Our journey also requires establishing a solid platform upon which we can stand to transform ourselves, all humanity and Mother Earth. Dear esteemed noble and honorable viewer, It's important to understand on our journey the fall of consciousness and how did it occur? When was it? Who was involved? How has it continued to unfold to this day? Archangels Uriel, Zadkiel, Mikael, and Metatron related the following story. Uriel began by saying and explaining there was no war, there were no bad guys, there was no angel that betrayed creator and ran off with all the knowledge. It did not happen that way. A long, long time ago creator wished to know itself more fully. So creator, the infinite prime creator, the divine grid programmer, reached into itself and created many new aspects of itself, including the Holy Spirit, the I Am Presence, and the Christed Light. Creator also reached into itself and created an infinite number of beings known as Creator Gods. The infinite prime creator, the all that is, sent the Creator Gods out to explore and create new possibilities to assist the Creator Gods Creator developed and provided a blueprint and gave it to them to use. Thrilled, the Creator gods created. Using this blueprint, they created magnificent creations with the light of Creator. They created universes, new aspects of consciousness, and realms of thought and wonderment. All new and all very exciting. This went on for a very long time, although time as we know it did not exist. At some point during the process, something unexpected occurred. Somewhere in all that is, a Creator God did something new and unintentional. Instead of following the blueprint, which said put blocks one, two, three, and four together in this sequence, this Creator God stacked the blocks differently. They were stacked three, one, and two, and four instead. At first, no one noticed this chain, and this new pattern began to weave into and appear in many other creations. Eventually, this way of creating was noticed. This discovery caused tremendous excitement among the Creator God. This was a brand new experience, something that had never been present before. The Creator Gods went back to Creator and asked for the ability to create even bigger and grander things. Creator agreed and gave them a new blueprint, one that was greatly expanded, containing many, many more aspects of Creator's light. This became known as the Will of Creator, also known as the First Ray of Creation, 
This ray contained the intention of Creator and everything was in total alignment with Creator's intention. This first ray was vast. One of the components it contained excited the Creator Gods very much. It was called free will. Up until that point, free will was not available. The Creator Gods had always followed the original blueprint, the one Creator had given them. Now, with free will, the Creator Gods created with both the light of Creator and their own light, separately and in combination. Equipped with these new tools, the Creator Gods went out and created in the most amazing ways. That was their job, and they loved their job. They loved their job at being Creator Gods. Creator also created Archangels and the Angelic Realm. The Archangels, according to Uriel, had a very specific purpose. They were created to be, in simple terms, the spectators and audience of the great creations the Creator Gods were creating. Their job was to go to the great theaters in a manner of speaking and enjoy the performances. That was their job. They did their job well and they loved their job. Creations continued and continued. The Creator Gods not only created more, they also had the capacity to create more Creator Gods. The Creator Gods created more creator gods and those creator gods created more creator gods and so the process continued the creator gods loved their creation some of the creator gods were so excited and thrilled with their creations that they began to use more of their own light to create rather than the pure light of Creator. As these Creator Gods continued to create more Creator Gods, this experience of creating with their own light was passed on to their creations. At first, this was not noticed. As this unfolded, small ripples and wobbles began to appear in creations. This was observed by many of the original Creator Gods and Creator itself. The newer Creator Gods didn't have the same level of wisdom, knowledge, and experience as the Creator Gods before them. Many of these younger Creator Gods were enamored with and loved their creations. Employing their free will, they began to use more of their individual light. Their creations contained less and less of the Creator's light, less of the intention of Creator, and much more of their own individual intention. These newer Creator Gods were very excited and they were having so much fun with their new abilities that they didn't even really concern themselves with this. This growing number of creations made without the full original light continued to be noticed by Creator and the older Creator Gods. These newer Creator Gods had free will, so it was not the place of the Creator to take away or stop their creations. To bring about a correction and assist these Creator Gods to return to the use of the blueprint, two new rays of creation were given to all of the Creator Gods. Because there was free will, it was only suggested that they be used, not required. These new rays provided opportunities to expand all that is. The second ray of creation was drawn from the first ray. The second ray holds all color. Color, until then, had never been experienced. It also holds the capacity to step energy up and step energy down, much like an electricity transformer. The second ray brought about many more possibilities of creating in larger and smaller ways and in more refined ways. The third ray of creation holds frequencies and sub-frequencies in many different configurations and arrangements, known as energetics. Within the third ray, these energetics consist of electricity, magnetism, and adhesion, and the power held within the atom. These are enormous building blocks of constructive energy that hold all possibilities.
The first, second, and third rays are all used during all steps of the creative process. Now, I want you to think about that for just a moment, okay? All steps of the creative process. These three ways, rays, were given to the creator gods to expand and add to all that is. It was also hoped that these new tools would encourage the creator gods to see more clearly the ripples they were creating and return to use the light of creator more fully. Unfortunately, mutations and distortions continued to appear in creation. A point was soon reached when many of the newer creator gods were using very little of creator's blueprint. Uriel explained that at this point a line was drawn and Creator said something very simple. If you wish to create with Creator's light, all is available to you on this side of the line. If you're going to create with your own light, then you no longer have access to the light of Creator. So, Many of the creator gods understood the importance of what was being offered and they returned to create within creator's light and the rays of creation, but many did not. There was no conscious intention to create distortions and ripples, but some of the creator gods were so enamored with their own creations that they chose to continue to create with their own light. By this time, the distortions and mutations had the capacity to replicate and regenerate on their own. The distortions self-organize and did not follow patterns of light held within the rays. They had a mind of their own. In a manner of speaking, mutating into expanded distortions with even less light. These distortions began to have a great impact not only on creations but also all creator gods. The more the Creator Gods created outside of Creator's light, the more distortions and mutations were in their creations. More wobbles and ripples appeared. This continued to be of concern to Creator and all those using Creator's light. Creator saw the potential of this pattern sparring wildly out into darkness. Therefore, more rays of creation were offered with the continuing purpose to neutralize the mutations and distortions and contain the disruption as well as add to the expansion of possibilities within each creation. Every new ray that was created and given worked really quite well. It really did, until it didn't. The mutations and distortions continued to create and spin off more distortions and more mutations. Distortions and mutations have no consciousness. They are like a virus of, or a machine that continues to duplicate and replicate, such as the machine hive mind of the artificial intelligence Borg, the digital matrix, the distortions and mutations of the digital matrix simultaneously within the aspect of the creator known as the Holy Spirit there was a new thought being thought the thought was a new form of creation never before experienced physicality physicalness up until then all that is all creations were non-physical nothing had density as this new thought began to take form this density became available this density was much less dense than the gases with which we are familiar today. This thought took aeons to evolve. As the second ray of creation was being used, it was discovered that light could be stepped down and compressed into density. This opened up a completely new realm of creation. The great beings of light, the avatars and Elohim could now experience themselves in form. This density continued to be stepped down and compressed into all manner of form and eventually into density such as rocks, oceans, trees, and much more. As creation continued to expand and evolve, another remarkable creation came about. Twelve living centers of consciousness were drawn from the Christed aspect of Creator and placed throughout all that is within the density of physicality. Each of these centers held the love and light of Creator. The purpose of each of these centers was to reflect this love and light back to the beings who inhabited or visited those centers. Consequently, many in the archangelic realm, the avatars, the Elohim, and all the great beings of light enjoyed these centers of Christed light as a reflection of themselves in oneness with Creator. 
Earth is one of these very special centers of light. To assist in this reflection of love and light, a simple life form was created and placed upon Earth. The purpose of this life form was to absorb the unique aspects of love and light held by the beings who inhabited or visited Earth and reflect them back to them as beauty in form. These reflections became the air and the waters, the flowers, trees, and mountains. These simple life forms are known as the elementals. Many of the creator gods, as well as others who were aligned with all that is, source, came to this Christed center called Earth. And as the fall of consciousness progressed, many of these great beings became unknowingly contaminated by the mutations. The physical creations that were being made on Earth began to hold more distortions and less of Creator's love. As a result of this long and intense infiltration of mutations and distortions, Earth could no longer continue to reflect the Christed consciousness and love back to those upon her surface. Her inhabitants no longer received her light, and Earth fell, losing its Christed light and love. Earth fell into greater and greater density and distortion. Earth fell. One center of light out of the twelve fell. This event created an enormous ripple through, throughout all that is. Earth had been, until this fall, a jewel of creation and a significant passageway available to all. As this collapse of light occurred, many of the great beings of light, the avatars, Elohim, angels, archangels, and many, many others were consumed and caught within the fall, increasing the density of the fall. The great beings of light petitioned Creator to create a floor or limit to the fall, a point that, if reached, would stop the descent. If Earth were to fall past that limit, it would not recover. With this request, a new creation within density was brought forth, known as Metatron's Cube. It was an intricate geometric construction of consciousness light and sound that had the capacity to do many things. In this case, it created a point where Earth could fall no further. The result was known as the third dimension. Welcome to the third dimension. The third dimension was rigid, structured, and very dense. There was no flexibility. This dimension had very specific limitations and could sustain and support very little light. Yet, yet there was consciousness held within Earth. Earth existed in this state of severe constriction, separation, and limitation for a very long time. The fall of consciousness overwhelmed so many of the great beings of light that the Archangelic realm petitioned Creator to expand their purpose. They asked that instead of simply watching the Creator gods create, it become their primary function to stop the fall of consciousness. Their purpose was to reverse the damage caused by the mutations and distortions and free all who had been affected. The Creator granted this request. Eventually, and over a very long period of time, the remaining consciousness of Earth was able to create enough of stabilization that the rigidity of structure was removed from the planet. The possibility of Earth falling further into darkness no longer existed. Long after the rigidity was removed, the inhabitants began to create new considerations and new thoughts that were outside the previous limitations. Where before there was only rigidity and no flexibility, now there began to be other possibilities. This change unfolded very slowly. There began to be more awareness and flexibility. Opportunities and different levels of consciousness returned to the planet, but the possibility of returning to be a center of Christed light was not available to Earth. The fall had left the planet and its inhabitants in a detached state of unconsciousness. More and more aspects of consciousness were infused into the planet and became anchored. After a long time, the possibility of seeding a new species on the planet began to be considered. This is the point where most of us have, a, have as an understanding of a beginning. This new species was called Lemurian. 
The Lemurians did not have physical bodies, but were instead less dense, airy forms. They were simple beings that held light, and light consciousness began to live more fully on the dense earth. The Lemurians were not you, not me, not us, dear esteemed viewer. They held a light consciousness and were the first step of the great experiment of returning earth to its Christed state and returning all to full consciousness. All through the unfolding of the rays of creation continued to be offered. All through this, unfolding the rays of creation continued to be offered. With each new ray, great creative possibilities unfolded. But they were not successful in permanently stopping the distortions and mutations that continued to expand and grow. This continued for many tens of thousands of years. Then, in the year 2003, something very, very exciting occurred. A new ray of creation was co-created by Creator with many great beings of light led by Archangel Michael. This ray contained an element that had never before been used in the creative process. Within all that is, this element was found here on Earth. The element in this new ray is the love that humanity holds for humanity. That simple, pure, unique vibration of love was put into this new ray and activated. It began to permeate many, many aspects of what had been contaminated by the fall of consciousness. The new ray worked, and it continued to work. The growth of the mutations and wobbles and distortions slowed down. In the third dimension, these mutations and distortions are vibrations that you know as anger, jealousy, resentment, rudeness, deceit, domination, control, incest, rape, and all the other isms such as sexism and racism. All of these ugly feelings, all of these ugly feelings and ugly thoughts are the mutations and distortions that play out within our lives today. These feelings and thoughts are all wrapped and based on fear and separation. To this day, the fall of consciousness has begun to reverse its influence. For the first time ever, the distortions and mutations, the darkness and fear that have permeated many aspects of Creator's creation are reversing. They are weakening and slowing down, and the Christ and light of Creator has more and more room to expand, grow, and reach out. This all because of you, dear esteemed and noble viewer. You are the great experiment the Christed light was placed as a tiny spark of light deep within your sacred heart to be found, grown, and brought forth. If you agree, hit the subscribe button and please leave this video a thumbs up as we continue to explore and dig out and reveal the Christed light within. Namaste. Namaskaram.